Good morning everyone, it's day, uh, what the hell is it, 64, and uh, it's an insanely late start to the day. It's uh, <laughs> 11.20, but I did get all my video uploaded, so that's the main thing, that is the main thing. Uh, we're back here at the trailhead, uh, you know, it's .9 of a mile. Walking into Parisburg, so obviously 0.9 of a mile walking back up. Uh, good times. So uh, yeah, we're gonna set off and uh, see how far we can get before uh, you know, like 6:30ish. There's a shelter uh, that's about six miles away, I think. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll go past that. And uh, there's a couple of campsites up there, but they're, they're dry camps. So we'll see what the water sources are like. There's only a couple, I think, um, for the whole journey today. I'm fully loaded up. Uh, I'm probably rocking about 40 pounds at the moment. So three bottles of water and uh, all my food. And I uh, changed up my food a little bit today. And. Uh, some bagels and cream cheese. Uh, I met a guy on trail here, his cream cheese was lasting uh, three to four days uh, without any real issue, so sweet. So we'll, we'll plow through that. Uh, I got some summer sausage, summer sausage, and uh, some cheddar cheese sticks for when the, uh, when the cream cheese is finished or goes off, whichever comes first. And uh, so yeah, that's it. Next stop will be Daleville, I believe, slash Troutville. They, they seem to be rubbing shoulders together. So that'll be uh, four to five days away, depending on the weather. Today's gorgeous. Uh, next two days, showers. What are you gonna do? What are you going to do? You just have to go through it. So uh, that's it from me. Uh, anything interesting on the trail? You know, I'll be showing it to you. All right, bye now. Well, this is what the trail looks like once you uh, get over the north side of uh, Cross Avenue. Starting to get out of Parisburg. And uh, before I forget, give a nice little shout out to Linda, the lovely lady managing uh, the Plaza Motel. What a sweetheart. Had a good old hug. Send me on my way today. Very, very nice host. You know, I just went above and beyond trying to make my stay enjoyable. She knew I was trying to upload video, and like I was saying, the uh, the Wi-Fi there is actually really quick. So long as you're sitting outside the front door of your motel room. Direct uh, line of sight to their Wi-Fi transmitter, but yeah, inside the room it's uh, about half the strength and prone to cutting out. So she knew that I was really trying to get these things uploaded so I could get out of here. So, you know, she, uh, she searched around and found me a had an extension cord so I could plug into my room and be able to uh, charge my phone while I'm sitting outside the room uploading the uh, the last video. You know, it's just little things like that, you know. Just make it stay worthwhile. You know, it's not a super flash place, but it was uh, it was cleaner than a lot of other places I've stayed at. It's been on the trail, I'll tell you that much. But, uh, yeah, just a, just a really nice lady. So, yeah, Plaza Motel in Parisburg. I recommend it. And, you know, it's super convenient. It's too easy, man. I'm already in shorts and a bandana, short sleeve shirt. It's 
uh, 62 degrees. Very pleasant walk so far. I know we're going up about 1500 feet before it starts leveling off. So, uh, a good warm up for the day. Thankfully, the track has dried up a fair bit. Yeah, it's amazing, man. You know, once you get a little bit of rain, these hills just explode with uh, water seepage. And uh, it's just oozing, leaking, spurting out of these hillsides. And it always seems to find its way to the Appalachian Trail. Just to, uh, just to make your walk more interesting. It's much more solid underfoot today. All right, we'll leave it here for a little while and I'll see you new, uh, when something else comes up. Awesome. You know, if somebody went up with a chainsaw and got rid of the dead ones, just a thought. Yeah, once you cross the uh, the bridge heading out of town, this is pretty much what the trail's like. You start going up the hill, it's much drier, more gravelly, which is perfect. And, uh, you know, a little bit further south that way. There, there are a couple of spots where you could put, you know, like a tent. Uh, if you're one of these weird people that didn't actually stay the night in Paris. But you just went into town to resupply and then you hit the trail again before it got dark. You know, trying to set new personal standards of monkey butt. But, uh... Yeah, there, there were a couple of places just just back there where you could uh, you could set up a tent. Like, Percy, I'd rather go into Parisburg, stay the night, and be clean and stuff. But I know there are people that do it. They just come into town, resupply, and hit the trail again. I have my limits. When I have the ability to bathe on the trail, I bathe on the trail, but I am an oddity in more ways than one with, uh, with carrying a wash basin. Most people don't. And you can smell them. Mmm. Very, uh, very pungent, very, uh, very sour. Yeah, that's nice for here. You know, it's amazing what a difference one hill on one side of town is compared to the other. Now, coming down into Parisburg, it's a fairly steep, I mean, it is switchbacked, but still a fairly steep descent and uh, you know absolute muddy mess and this side's all perfectly nice gravel dry and a way better gradient so uh, yeah northbound is definitely lucked out it's going up going up southbound uh, going out of Parisburg Oy, man, that's a climb it is a climb, but uh, yeah, no, this has been nice. Very happy. Well, this is a nice stream off this dirt road. We've uh, we just come off the hill, crossed over a uh, a road there, and now we're sort of passing through. Uh, sort of, I guess it's private property on this gravel road. 
and uh, yeah. So an elderly couple came by and he says, well, I don't know if I would drink out of that. He said, but uh, if there's water past, past the shelter and uh, when you go up the hill. He said, and that way you don't have to carry water up the hill. And then this car pulls up and the couple in there are asking me if I knew so-and-so who was a through hiker and I didn't. And I asked them about the water and they're like, oh yeah, yeah that water's fine, man. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> so, I chugged, uh, I chugged one bottle of water and I uh, refilled here. So, you know, if I come down with some hideous illness, uh, let's, uh, let's trace it back to this. That's amazing how much drier it is on this hill as opposed to the south side of Parisburg. Track's great. It's hard packed dirt with gravel, but uh, still soft to walk on. Actually, the whole walk today has been really pleasant. Gradient's great. There's a stream further up the trail, about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. It's got to be the same water source though. I think we're continuing this way. And turn left at the rock pile. All right, here we go. It's just a big jumble of rock. That goes all the way up there. Then you have a gap. And then you have another fork of jumbled rocks going up this way. Wild. We've just been continuing up the path here about uh, five minutes from where I just filmed. That's a dead easy place to get water. I don't know, this thing runs all the time, but it's running really well now. We, uh, we just have to traverse this and then head on up. Well, it wouldn't be a day in Virginia without having a path go through rubble. It's an amazing rubble field. Now, see, in other parts of the trail, you're actually walking up stuff like this. I mean, it's, yeah, three to four foot wide trail of sorts, but this is basically what you're walking on. Which is why it uh, gets mildly tedious after a while. All right, we'll be coming up the uh, the trail a little bit further from that rubble field, and this nice uh, elderly gentleman and his wife they uh, they come up here all the time, and uh, he is uh, very nicely <laughs> blue blazed to this uh, water source here and this uh, pipe.
and he said that this thing runs basically all the time. <coughs> he's he's never seen it dry, so good water source. And this is uh, we're, we're we're pretty close to rice field shelter, like really close. So I'm gonna pop up there, and uh, it's a nice uh, elderly couple said they'll they'll make me some tea if I stop and have a chat. So I'm gonna have a, a late lunch. Have a bagel, and uh, yeah, be a nice, nice way to spend the afternoon. So yeah, you can't miss it. It's by the big rock with all the blue paint on it. <laughs> well, it's rice field shelter. Go there and have some lunch. But. Virginia gives me the first bold, or well, mini bold, where it's not stupid windy. And time things pretty well because we just had rain, so everything is super duper clear. How about that? style got one of these kick ass man that's old school look how thick that is <laughs> love it <sighs> this is a nice shelter now that's an overhang that's how you do it Very nice. And it's a privy out the back. And tenting options back here too. Probably, uh, I could probably fit about 10 tents back here without too much trouble. Nice spot. my lunch on. I like this one. How nice is it to just paint it? So much more festive. Man, clean. This one looks fairly new. Sweet. Well, I just finished lunch with uh, Bob and Mary, an extremely sprightly 73 year old couple. I walk up here on a regular basis, like at least once a week. <laughs> yeah. So that lunch uh, took about 50 minutes, but it's good to have a good to have a leisurely lunch from time to time and a, and a good conversation, you know. People that have been around, seen stuff. So I'm gonna walk. Uh, there's a couple of campsites further north here. One's uh, just a few miles up, and then another one's about six or seven. Uh, the dry campsites. So I mean, I've got plenty of water. I'm not. I'm not really concerned. But um, one of these campsites that's close. Here, well, there's, there's a stream coming up, and uh, I might stop there and just top off. And they were saying that they heard two days ago that Pine Swamp um, shelter is reopened. So, we shall see. They said they just haven't taken the signs down. I 
won't be making that tonight. That's, uh, that's a little ways up. It's been having a little bit of a cruisy day today, to be honest. Since we had such a late start, there was no real point plowing through. The weather tomorrow is not supposed to be super hot. So we'll, uh, we'll try and get some mileage in tomorrow, as soon as I won't be pulling the camera out that much if uh, we get the kind of rain that they were saying. So. Alright, we'll leave it here, we'll pick it up in a little bit. Well, since uh, leaving the bald, you, uh, you enter the wood line again, and uh, it was a fairly rocky, uh, narrow ridge line. And then you exit out into a grassy area where there's high tension power lines, you walk under those for a little ways, and then you re-enter to the west, into the wood line. And uh, this is pretty much what it looks like. Um, like I said, there's a couple of campsites coming up. Um, but you know, areas like this, man, you, you can make that happen. Just, you know, you just gotta check the trees. There's a lot of dead trees. A lot of dead trees. So. At the moment it's not super exciting scenery but I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like for those uh, coming up behind it's uh, a little bit of brown on brown on brown well, let's look at southbound we've been walking on this rather uninspiring scenery for about an hour and uh, you have this. There's a lot of wood on the ground around this area, but uh, well, you, you could you could make something happen over there. But yeah, it's uh, it's not the most inspiring area, I must say. Um, I, I don't think I've been in many other places where there's you know, as much crap on the ground. So you'd really have to choose your, your sleeping area carefully around here. I passed, uh, I passed a little, well I guess you could call it a stream, uh, about 15 minutes back. But it was, it was down a slope and it didn't look like it was really doing much of anything. And if you'd if you'd watered up at that pipe, which was about oh 12, 13 minutes before rice field shelter, uh, you shouldn't really be needing water at, at this junction anyway. But uh, we will continue on and uh, see if we can find some uh, better areas that are suitable for camping. Well, we're about 10 minutes pass where I showed you the other uh, red rock firing and uh, we have another area here there's uh, there's less stuff on the ground here um, you can tent easily over there and just to the left here and the ground the ground's pretty pretty rocky and as I found out the night before, I found a, a nice flat dirt spot covered in leaves. And when I went to drive in my stakes, I only went in about an inch. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just inundated with, uh, with rocks. So, yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky up here. Hopefully, find a, a more suitable place to uh, set up for the night. Well, we're let's see, about two hours from uh, rice field, and we've been coming up this little grassy corridor here. I mean, this is certainly usable as campground. 
I haven't looked at the book to see if it's a uh, private property that you're not allowed to do any such thing, but... I haven't seen any fire rings either. Which usually indicates it's a long-term camping option. Six o'clock, and I'll uh, continue for another uh, half an hour, forty-five minutes. See, uh, see what the best option is within that time frame. And uh, this is just a few minutes from where I uh, just filmed. We're still walking down this this grass trail here. But again, you just gotta, gotta watch all these terribly healthy branches overhanging you. But I'll continue. I'm gonna have a quick look at the book too and see what's ahead of me. And this is only about uh, three or four minutes further north from uh, the other little uh, fire pit area. People have obviously tented in here. But I don't like being next to stuff like this. I just set up my tent there. That's a good fire pit. Damn good fire pit. Make use of those rocks. All right. Oh, and uh, we've got a view. Now the other reason I'm stopping is because down there it looks like you're just going back into uh, a repeat of the brown on brown crap all over the ground area that I've been uh, traveling through on this ridge line for most of the uh, afternoon and uh, I like the look of that better for uh, putting my tent up and I've uh, been able to actually put stakes into the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's funny what you find important. All right, well, that's going to be me. Um, I might get back to you after I get my uh, tent set up for the evening. Good evening, everyone. It's the end of uh, day 64. And uh, after a light, late start, uh, I made it to a nice uh, campsite, um, nice grassy spot. I couldn't, I couldn't go where I originally wanted with the view. There was... Uh, some rocks and some weird, um, like thorny, brambly things uh, spaced out in a way that was going to make it too hard to get my tent in there. So, but I'm only about you know 30 feet from it. So nice, nice and grassy, safe. Uh, not terribly windy here. And um, yeah, ended up doing about 14 miles today. You know, which isn't bad. As soon as I was at the trail here at about 11:30ish, I think. But uh, in order to get into Daleville slash Troutville, uh, by Thursday I'm gonna have to be knocking out some uh, pretty pretty close to 25 mile days, and the terrain's kind of up and down a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's a you know it's a nice walk. It's a nice walk coming out of Parisburg heading north. Um, it looks a lot worse. I mean, it didn't look tragic, but I mean, it looked like a good climb. But it's um, a really nicely graded switchbacked track. 
and um, the track's in excellent condition. Way better than on the uh, on the south side. And it's a nice, it's a really nice walk basically all the way up to um, Rice Field Shelter. And then once you leave there and you uh, you go past the power lines and head west off the trail into the wood line. And that's pretty crappy in there, to be honest. Um, brown on brown on brown and, you know, just fallen debris everywhere. Now, there are a couple of campsites listed. But there was, uh, you know, there was so much fallen branches on the ground. I, I wouldn't even bother staying in there. I definitely just pushed through um, like I did today and, and end up in this nice grassy knoll with, um, you know, there's a couple of fire pits spaced out that I showed you. I mean, you know, I don't need them, but, you know, a lot of people like to have a fire pit. And, um, you know, apart from some weird brambly stuff in the grass, uh, it, it wasn't too hard. It wasn't too hard finding a spot. And um, and you're actually able to drive your stakes into the ground. Which is nice when you want to hold your tent in place. So, yeah. Yeah, for the rest of the week, I have to be putting out some pretty decent mileage because of the, the shorter day that we had today. I mean, I, I wasn't intending... <laughs> <laughs> to be leaving uh, the motel after 11. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is, you know. These these videos, I've, I've got to get them off my phone. And I've got to get them off my phone when I'm in town. So it was just one of those things where there was a fair amount of video to upload. And, um, and the Wi-Fi there was a little squirrely unless you were outside your room, so... But like I said, man, once you're outside the room, it's it's pretty quick. Pretty quick. So I will see you tomorrow morning. Um, day 65. Heading to... Let's see. Hopefully Laurel Creek Shelter. I think that one's about 23 or 24 miles, so... Body's feeling pretty good. My skin is dry, man. Dry. I think the soap at the uh, at the motel was uh, to say a little harsh. A little harsh. I was looking at my forearms and that today. I was going, God damn. <laughs> yes, I need some cocoa butter. Um, I'm all ashy. White boy ashy. All right, so that's enough for me. I will see you all tomorrow morning. All right. Good night, everyone.